Okay, well, Alison Elliott, now you're head of policy and government relations at Choice, and uh, you guys at Choice do an amazing job of sort of working on behalf of consumers and getting fair play, I suppose, is what you're seeking generally, but a very prestigious organisation, and I know closely related to which in the UK, which uh, is another organisation as well. But recently, you and your colleagues have been doing some work about the whole situation around travel cancellations, and refunds and all that sort of stuff, which, as you know, we discussed in our briefing a few seconds ago, nobody could have expected. And nobody could have expected COVID coming along in the form it has. And early on in the piece, I mean, if I was running a travel operation, I must have gone, oh my goodness, this is the end of the world as we know it. But, you know, things have moved on. But your report has cast up some very interesting aspects of, um, of what's gone on with a lot of people, one in five of the survey, the people surveyed of there was it, 4,000 and odd people surveyed. Um, saying it took them many, many months. And one in five of the surveys, only fewer than one in five got a full refund. So tell me a little bit about the process you went through and some of the results from a choice perspective and what sort of reaction you've had uh, over the last 24 hours or so. So we ran an online survey in early 2021 and we received over 4,400 responses from Australian consumers really telling us what their stories and experiences were in 2020 and 2021. Yeah. Um, as you would expect, the experiences varied really greatly. Yeah. Um, some worked with providers that were very responsive and reactive to their concerns and were very quick to provide refunds. Oftentimes they were really small providers that had a very personal relationship with their yeah. clients and customers. On the other end of the spectrum, oftentimes many of the larger providers, also probably reflect, reflective of the larger numbers of customers that they had, yeah. oftentimes received some pretty scathing feedback. And we've observed two key problems. One is the sheer variation in what people got back for the money that they yeah. placed in that booking. And two, the customer service standards it was highly variable but more often than not we heard of really challenging processes that people went through to mm. get back something for their money or to figure out what was happening with their booking mm. we heard time and time again of people waiting on hold for hours and hours yeah. and then being disconnected <laughs> after several yeah. hours yeah. Um, if if they had an immediate booking that's highly highly stressful mm. but even if not you know, that doesn't cut it in other um, industries. And certainly for services worth thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, we think there's a real opportunity to lift standards of customer mm. service across the sector. Mm. Wouldn't you think, though, that companies, and I mean, I'm quite surprised, but, I, you know, I'm, well, I am surprised in one way that the smaller companies were the ones who probably had more of an interest in the future of their businesses and, um, and future bookings and the loyalty of their, uh, their clients and so on. But the bigger companies, um, isn't it a bit of a surprise that um, they they treated their guests so badly let's call it so badly but in terms of the looking to the future i mean will the will those will, the, will those clients book with those people again i mean what what does it mean in terms of customer care and looking after customers when you expect high standards from big corporations yeah well some people have vowed never to book with those companies mm. ever again which is a real shame and Essentially, the recommendations that we've made in this report mm. are about restoring consumer confidence. You know, Australians love to travel and we want them to be able to make bookings with confidence that they know where they stand mm. because we are living in very uncertain times. Yeah. We don't know what will be around the corner. And as recent lockdowns during school holidays has shown us, this problem isn't going away. Mm -hmm. So the best thing we can do is put mm -hmm. in, in place a framework that provides fairness and consistency. Yeah. So people know where they stand should, should plans have to change. Mm. And why is that fairness and consistency not in existence in Australia already in terms of travel when in the US it is and when in the UK it is? I mean, did it ever exist in Australia or is it something that's fallen by the wayside over time just in terms of travel? Look, not 
not to my knowledge. Mm. I don't believe don't any so. uh, mm. system of the sort has ever been mm. in place. Um, as you quite rightly identify, in the UK, there's a system of laws that requires refunds for cancelled flights and for cancelled holiday packages. The similar regime exists in Europe. Mm. And we think Australian consumers should be entitled to a similar um, suite of protections. Mm. No, I think you've done a fabulous job in this report. Um, the thing that concerns me, I suppose, in a sense, is that um, for the people who've already paid their money, I mean, I was talking to a guy the other day who paid $40,000 to a cruise company and is getting no sense whatsoever from them about getting their money back. And having been in the corporate world, I suppose to an extent, I can't understand, but I can see if I was running a major corporation and I had to pay out millions of dollars and yet my business was absolutely appalling at this point in time, probably the financial controller would want to hold on to things. But I would say that the marketing director and the PR director were saying, hang on, we need to be nice to our clients here, otherwise we might lose them. But for those people now who are out on a limb, who've lost all their money, okay, or are finding it difficult, or are on the phone for four or five hours, or are getting standard reply emails and so on. What is available to them at this point in time to try and help them to, uh, to recover their money? So we have a bunch of advice on our website, choice.com.au, mm. but also remember your state and territory Fair Trading Commission is yeah. there and also the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. So if you want to escalate your complaint and get further advice, those bodies are, are there um, and will help you through the process. Mm. Excellent. I noticed in your recommendations, one of the seven, I think it was seven recommendations you had, and um, easier travel refunds, yes, that's going into the future now. And look, I'm pretty certainly that's something that's going to have to happen. Minimum voucher credit rights, mandatory industry code for airlines and large travel providers. So it's very, very clear when something happens outside of consumer's control that refunds are provided. Travel and tourism industry ombudsman. Now, that was a really good proposal, I think, in terms of because a lot of the people at the moment have nowhere to turn. If they book through a travel agent, they go to their travel agent. But very often the travel agent has no leverage. So I think an ombudsman is critical. Mandatory information at the time, as standard at the time of booking. Some of these companies have been changing their terms and conditions of employment as things, uh, terms and conditions of uh, trading as they've gone along. And sort of a lot of older people particularly have just accepted some of those. But the one I wanted to ask you about was an ACCC market study into the travel and tourism sector. What were your thoughts behind that in terms of saying an ACCC uh, market study? So what we know and understand is that the supply chain in travel and tourism is really complex. There are a number of new players on the scene and intermediaries, and there's a, a supply chain where the money can move very quickly, it can move across jurisdictions. Yes. We know this is a complicated picture. Mm. And there might be opportunities for um, industry guidance or new forms of regulation, but actually we don't feel that we have enough information in mm. front of us to know what will be effective given the challenges and individual characteristics of the travel and tourism supply mm. chain. So that's why we feel an ACCC market study will be really yeah. helpful to understand those complexities even further. And is it likely that that ACCC market study um, can recommend legislation? Oh, look, it could. Um, I, I don't think that anything would be off the cards. And certainly we look to the ACCC to provide advice mm. and recommendations on how consumers can enjoy better protections. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Good. Now, the final one I didn't quite understand, so maybe you can explain it to me quickly before we finish, was a National Travel Restrictions website. Tell me a bit about that. So consumers and businesses are united in the fact that it's pretty complex picture trying to figure out what restrictions exist in different locations. Um, you might be aware of the Smart Traveller website yeah, where back yes. in the days of international travel, mm -hmm. we could <laughs> register our holiday plans. We, were tra we could travel time. internationally, could we? We're I don't remember that far back. 
Go on. Yes, they, they were happy days. Um, but travellers could register and get real-time updates mm. should the situation change in, their, in the destination that they're going to. Mm. We think a similar website would be really helpful for Australian travellers to yes. get and businesses to get clear, impartial, official um, advice potentially on a map. So it's very clear to both businesses and consumers if there are restrictions in place which mean that the service cannot be provided. We think that would be a really useful tool um, for everyone in the community so they can get clarity. Whereas at the moment, it's often um, on a state and territory level. So you really need to go digging into a lot of detail to figure out what, what restrictions may apply. Yeah. I think a lot of people have been quite shocked during this COVID pandemic about the differences between states and the legislative scenarios in states and the power of the states and the feds in terms of what they can do. But I think that's an excellent suggestion and sincerest congratulations to you and your team for such an excellent report and also for your clarity today in explaining it. I really appreciate it. So Alison Elliott, thank you very much for your time today and very best wishes and let's hope to see something concrete come out of the work that you've done, which has been excellent. Thank you. Thank you, John.